we're on the beautiful Fernandez Bay Beach Resort on Cat Island in the Bahamas. Nearly every pilot I've talked to has the same bucket list item, fly your own airplane to the Bahamas. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to fly your own airplane to the Bahamas. Before we get started, I have a general tip. You're gonna to have to create a bunch of accounts on federal websites with really annoying password restrictions. If you're not using something called a password manager, like onepassword.com or KeePass, I suggest going and signing up for one of those, even if it's just a free one. You're gonna to wanna to be able to access these accounts from the Bahamas as well. So storing those passwords in a way that you can get to them when you're out on the islands is very important. Okay, first thing first, you need your passport. Seems pretty obvious, but make sure you have it and it's not about to expire. You need 12 inch in tail number on your aircraft. That means the letters are 12 inches high. This is required for passing through the US ADIS. The ADIS is a zone just offshore all the way around the United States that the military monitors for inbound and outbound traffic. The tail numbers can be easy. You can put them on with duct tape or blue painter's tape, uh, or you can have a local sign shop print you up some pretty nice numbers. That's what I did for mine and I, and I love it. I think it cost me 80 bucks for the pair. If you're like me and you've had your pilot's license for a while, it might not have a line that says English language proficient on it. Technically, it's a requirement to fly into international airspace. It's a pretty easy fix if you don't have that line on your license. I think you pay like three bucks to the FAA and they should be a new card. You need a customs decal. Now, you'll have to get one of these for every year. And the customs decal is basically to prove that you've paid your customs tax. It's kind of like a, a used tax where if you're coming in and out of the border, the money pays for uh, customs handling. You're gonna need to get this from the DTOPS website. Unfortunately, this website makes you create two accounts just to buy a, a decal. One account for billing and the other account for the decal itself for your vessel. When I did it, it was maybe 35 bucks for the decal for the year. Um, and then you're gonna be required to affix that to the outside of your airplane. You're required to have one US Coast Guard approved life jacket per passenger. That's the minimum requirements. Some folks like to go above and beyond and bring rafts and survival equipment, extra water, flares, maybe some alcohol. Personally, I brought two of those square kind that go over your head, US Coast Guard approved life jackets. Okay, there are two licenses that you're required to get from the FCC. One is a station operator's license that's specific to your aircraft, and the other is a personal license to allow you to transmit that's specific to you. You can get both of these from the website that I have linked below. If you're flying an experimental aircraft, there is a waiver that you can get from the Bahamas government to, that says everything is okay with this aircraft. It doesn't need to be type certificated. Just print that out and stick it in with the rest of your airplane documents. Those are all of the things that you only have to do once. Now we're gonna cover the things that you have to do once per trip. COVID health passport. Before you go, you're required to file a passenger manifest for the US Customs Agency called eAPIS. eAPIS is a website that you'll have to sign up for an account on. You'll enter all of your information, passports, pilot license, addresses, phone numbers, and you'll do the same thing for all of your passengers as well. Then you file a trip saying, I'm gonna leave this airport at this time, I'm gonna cross the ADIS at this time, and I'm going here. And there's two of these that you're gonna have to file, one outbound and one inbound. You can file your eAPIS weeks in advance if you want to, but it gets approved almost instantly. So I've been waiting until right before my trip, morning of, to file it when, I, when I'm sure that the weather's not gonna cancel me and I won't have to refile it. It's kind of a pain to fill in all that information on your phone. I've done it and I've refiled from within the Bahamas and it does work. Uh, fortunately, once you've done it once, there's a feature where you can copy a manifest from an old trip and then just change some values and that's a lot easier. But the first time it takes a while. When you're flying to the Bahamas, you do not need to leave from any specific airport. If you have the fuel and range, you can leave from your home airport and land in the Bahamas. 
coming back from the Bahamas, you have to land at a designated port of entry in the United States. And most of the airports along the east coast of Florida are designated points of entries. Okay, so both going out to the Bahamas and coming back into the Bahamas, you'll need to file something called a Defense VFR Flight Plan. It's an ICAO flight plan where you're saying that it's DVFR, so I'm trying to penetrate the ADIS uh, one, one direction or the other. Um, I've done this a couple different ways. I've called them on the phone. I've used the website, uh, 1-800-WXBrief.com, and I've used it through ForeFlight. I watched somebody file their flight plan through 1-800-WXBrief.com, and, and it gave them the code. I think that's definitely the easiest way to do it, and that'll be the way I'm going. I'm going to do it going forward as well. So I've done this trip with flight following, and I've done this trip without flight following. To be honest, I kind of prefer without flight following. I, I fly follow everywhere in the United States, no question, but the Miami and Nassau controllers are so busy. I, I could barely get an, a word in edgewise. You know, do, do what makes you feel safest. You're flying over international waters of the ocean. So, uh, you know, just wherever your risk tolerance is. Okay, so that's it. So you've left the United States, you've landed in, in the Bahamas. They're gonna wanna see all of your documentation. You're gonna fill out something called a transire permit. It's basically just a, a piece of paper that says you've landed at customs in the Bahamas. You can fly intra-island in the Bahamas and show them the transire permit that you've already gone through customs and uh, you won't have to go through it again. Here are all of the fees associated with landing in the Bahamas. Make sure you bring a lot of cash. Almost every vendor that'll take a credit card will charge you an extra amount of money for using the credit card. So cash is king in the Bahamas for sure. The Bahamian do dollar is one to one with the United States dollar. So if you pay something with American money, you're probably gonna get Bahamian dollars back. Coming back, you'll need to file your incoming EAPIS manifest. You'll need to file your DVFR flight plan. And this time you actually need the transponder code. Again, I'd use 1-800-WXBrief.com. Uh, you file through that web page and the code pops up in a dialog box, it's great. You have to notify the port of entry that you're coming back into. So let's say I'm flying back into Fort Pierce, which is a common port of entry back into the United States. I'll, ca I'll call them when they open in the morning, which I think is like eight or nine. And uh, you're required to do that at least one hour before you land or else you can get hit with a fee. So call them, let, you, let them know. They will give you a code that if for some reason they say you didn't call, you can say the code. And then all you have to do is land at and pull directly up to customs in the United States. Last time we did it, they didn't need to check our baggage. We just walked in with our passports. They looked at our passports and that was it. We were on our way. All of these things that I've told you to do to get ready to go to the Bahamas, not a single person checked any of it. With the exception of looking at our passports and looking at the health visa in the Bahamas, nobody cared about decals, hotel numbers, any of the other crazy FCC radio licenses, like nobody ever looks at that stuff from what I can tell. So I did it all because I'm a rules follower. So you can take that information and utilize it how you ever you wish. So that's it folks. The Bahamas is a beautiful playground. There's no reason that you can't make your trip right now. Start planning for it. It's awesome here. You can do it this year, right now. Start planning.